and then you use the strip test. So a marker will come, which will show, we're telling you that your protein that we are looking for is present in this sample. But it will not give the quantity. Analysis. So these quantitative analysis are there for the quantification of what you are, what is being analyzed. And then I talked about the three categories of analytical methods in, used in the clinical chemistry laboratory. One is the instrumental methods. So you use instruments. For example, you, are, you know many machines that are being used in the laboratory, like a spectrometer as example, or COBAS or other ones. So there is also physiological methods. The physiological method is use of, of solutions. For example, if you are measuring the presence of glucose in the urine, you know that you may use a Benedict solution. So you just take sample and mix with Benedict and you heat, and then you see that the protein, the color will change. And then say, in this sample, they took a uh, quantitative method for measuring uh, uh, sorry, glucose in urine, the Benedict. So it is physiological method. The last one is assay kits. So you know there is a kit. For example, in the corona detection, you may have a kit which contains all of those things that you will need, like buffer, like uh, that strip test that you'll be using, like uh, the that, that, that the other one that you'll be using to collect the sample. So that kit is mixed of all, is a, like envelope that contain all those needed materials. So you may use that kit also and you'll be you, to, to test a, a particular or certain disease. So that's what I was saying. And then I, I talked about the variability of analytical data. So this variability of analytical data may depend on the uh, errors, which may be random or, and, or systematic error. So usually, random errors usually result from experimenters' inability to take the same measurement in exact the same way to get the exact the same number. Example, the function of effect of balance. So this random error is er, er, errors caused by the experimenters or caused by you, you who is working in the laboratory. So this is, uh, those are the errors that may result from you. For example, you are using uh, uh, balance that you didn't calibrate. For example, you are mixing your solution without using the, the protocol. For example, you forget to put something, for example, you are not respecting time, all those errors that are from you, you experimenter, are called random errors. And then there are systematic errors. These systematic errors are constant. They are reproducible in accuracies and they are con consistently in the same direction. Systematic errors are often due to problem which persist through the entire experiment, either due to the instability of the instrument or that fact the same sample has been analyzed. So the systematic errors are may, may be from uh, another sources. For example, for example, instrument or for example, a system, other factors. So this is how to minimize these errors. So for random errors, you have to measure the mass. You have to, first of all, for this random error, you have to check where is the origin of the error. So you have to be sure to take more data. Random can be evaluated through the statistical analysis and can be reduced varying over the average number of observation. And then the, the systematic error. Uh, systematic error are difficult to detect and cannot be analyzed st uh, statistically because of a lot of data is off in the same direction. So spotting and correcting this systematic error take a lot of care. So uh, in summary, 
False positive results if method is quantitative or positive biases if quantitative results. So let's have an example. You know the, the rapid tests that are being used for the detection of HIV. Those rapid tests, they are sensitive. They have high sensitivity. You know why? It is because if they are positive, it means that they may be positive to HIV or they may be positive to other viruses. That is why they have high sensitivity. They are sensitive. But they are not specific. 
because they are not specific to the HIV that you are measuring, that you are targeting. So I hope you get it. So they have high sensitivity, but low specificity. So this is the assessment of the diagnostic test. For biochemical test, uh, specificity, uh, specificity analyte to be uh, routinely used as the aid of a clinical diagnosis, it is a chance that the test has a required performance indicator, especially specificity and sensitivity. So here is how to, to calculate in the specificity of a test. So you will take the true positive test, you multiply by 100 and you divide it by the true, the total patient with the disease. So for example, if you have a, a true positive test, uh, or the true positive test, if you have where to write, just do this exercise, take, take a pen, and they say that the true positive test are, uh, let's say, 90. Hundred patients. This means that our test has 90% of sensitivity. So Where the specificity is to show the equation. As I told you that the sensitivity is to indicate the, 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 the positive, the true positive. It's expressed in the percentage of the true positive in all individuals who have a disease. So I talked about this and I gave you the, uh, the formula. The test specific is measured how good the test is providing negative results. This is specificity. And it's also expressed in percentage. So this is also another, another method, which is called the receiver operating characteristics. So it's, it's a way of, to trace it. Sorry. We are not yes. getting the slide, please. Oh, you slide. lost the slide? OK. Yes. So I, I was, but you heard about the sensitivity and the specificity. I told you that sensitivity is to indicate the true positive and in the specificity is the true negative. And the, these are the formulas that I was saying. 
And this is another way of tracing a, a curve using what you call a receiver operating characteristics. Uh, so you trace the, 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 the positive and the, the, the negative using this curve. So they put the sensitivity on this axis and the specificity on Y and the specificity on the axis. So, uh, so I talked all of this. They, they gave you the idea, the examples. If the test 100 is sensitive, positive, or patient with a disease, and the other is specific, it means all patient without a disease. So the idea of this achievement is usually over between health and disease population. Whereby health population have results outside the reference interval. This is called the false positive and the false negative. I talked about this. So there is also negative productive values. In negative is results percentage or negative results that are true negative. And this frequency of subject without disorder in, in is subject that negative are tested, the high negative predictive. So I talked all of, of these formulas, how to get true negative, false positive, like that. Positive productive values is also uh, the formulas here. So you just take an example, you take true positive, true positive, false positive, and you multiply by 100 and you get the results. And you say, this test have a, a positive productive value, which is equal to this one. It may be 90%, 80%, like that. Efficient of the test is this is how to measure the efficiency of the test. You take true value plus a true negative and the true positive, and then you get the results like that. So the formula is very easy. And the, if you read the slide, you will understand more. So I think you, there is no need to go through all the slides and the, they are understandable. Okay. So this is like modulation. And this is uh, an, uh, the summary as an example. So you will use this, you see this table, and you, have, you take the table and the value within the table, and then you calculate all those, uh, all those uh, uh, formulas that I, uh, or, uh, I gave you. So using, maybe you want to calculate the sensitivity of test, then use this, uh, the positive 50, Negative is 10, 55 is total sample, multiply by 100 and we get 91, like that. So I think you are seeing a good example. So if you have time, just take this table and calculate using the formulas. So you will get, understand more, okay? Is that clear, class? Yeah. Okay, good. Let's continue. Yeah. So, the production of the results. The factors affecting the validity of results include a unit of measurement, calibration, and a laboratory report. So, last time I told you about the, the, the pre analytical error, analytical error, and the post analytical error. So, this also, uh, the fact, these are also factors that are affecting the validity of the results. So, Measurement, understand also will mislead the unit measurement. It will lead to the calibration. The calibration is calibrated well. For example, you are using a balance which is not well calibrated. It's a problem. For example, you are using, using pipettes which are not calibrated. Then we read the problem. You know, the pipette, you use pipette to take the, the small amount of samples, like a micro. 10 micro, 20, 50. So if your pipette is not calibrated, then you, you wish to take 50 microliter. So the uncalibrated pipette we may take 60 or 40, and then you end up by having the wrong result because you used an calibrated uh, pipette. So, and then the laboratory report, laboratory report. So the, the report, you know that report should indicate the, uh, the detail about the sample. Imagine if you use the report which is not indicating the details of the sample or which is used, which is indicating the wrong details on the sample. That is also a big problem. So those are the 
factors that may affect your results. So I think you talk, we talked a lot about that last week. So the quality control, quality control, you know quality control, actually. You have to control the quality of what you are doing. So in clinical chemistry a laboratory, it is very important to do the quality control. For example, you control your reagent. So the reagent that I'm using, are they good quality? Are they uh, uh, the sample that I'm using? So for quality control, you, you control the reagent, you control the instrument, and you control the, 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 the environment that you are, you are working in. For example, the quality control, it has internal and the external quality control. So the internal quality control is the one you you, you as a as an experimenter. So I'm using this term experimenter because uh, uh, maybe you are not going to be lab technicians, you are going to not work to in the lab, but soon may you may be scientists, for example. If you finish your you are all general medicine or you have pharmacy and dental dental surgery. I think you have dental surgery and medicine. So if you finish your dental surgery, you finish your, your bachelor's in medicine, you may choose a career to be scientist. scientist. So if you choose to be a scientist, it means that you work in the lab because the science is in lab. So you go to lab and you do experiment. So uh, when, you are, when you'll be doing your experiment, you use all these methods. So you have to do the quality control. As a, as a scientist, you cannot sit and work without doing quality control. That's one. You may also be a, a leader of a lab. You may also lead a lab after you finish your studies. You find a job somewhere and they ask you to to be the boss, the head of the department of the laboratory. It is first, it is important for you to know that all before the starting of the work, they have to do the quality control. If you don't ask them to do the quality control, then they will, they will uh, do their work without the quality control and you end up by having wrong results. After having the wrong results, it means that your laboratory doesn't have quality. So the, your bosses will come and ask you, you are not able to read this lab because you are using the, you are, you are providing the wrong results. So, or are the, you may open the lab as a lab technician. If you don't finish your medicine, so for example, you, you, you stop in, third year or fourth year. So there they will only give you uh, bad medical science. So you're going to work in lab. So it is important for you to know all these or all, all this uh, all this method that I'm I'm teaching you and it is important to know the 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 utility of quality control. So the quality control in the laboratory is very important. So I told you that there is external and internal quality control. So the internal quality control is the one you as, as a experimenter or you as a lab technician, you have to do, you, or you as a researcher or you as a scientist, you have to do when you are performing a test. It means you take controls. So there is a control. It means control is there and is measured in the lab. So when you buy a kit, a kit with a reagent, the control is, has the known number. So you measure that control before you start. And you have a control. So you use that control to measure and you say today I measure control and I get if it, it may be negative control or positive control. It's called negative control when, for example, uh, you know, uh, blood sugar vary between 70 to 110. So you have negative control, it means that you have control which gives the results of 70. 
Mary Grambard Besrita. And you have another one which give uh, results of 110 Mary Grambard Besrita. So when you are measuring before starting the work, you know that this, my control will give 70. You measure 70 and it gives you 70 and then you put somewhere, you write somewhere. Uh, today is in, on the third, on, oh no, on the fifth, on the fifth November. So the fifth November, I measured control, it gave me 70 negative control. And then positive control, it gave me 110. And again, tomorrow you also measure before you start the work. And the Sunday, every day. And you plot that is that somewhere. You wrote that is that somewhere. That is the uh, uh, internal quality control. So it's the control quality control that you perform you do before you start the work. And you control your agents, you control your equipment, and you control even your your attitude. You have to control. Then external quality control is when is when external laboratories comes for the, the control. For example, in the case of malaria, you are testing malaria and they may ask you, for example, the National Laboratory of Reference may ask you, send us two slides, positive slides, and two negative slides from your laboratory. So you send them the same. If those slides you say the positive are positive, if it does slide that you indicate negative are negative, and then they give you marks. If, if all are, of what you said is true, they give you 100%. If what you say is not true, like I say this is positive and they find it is negative, and then they give you marks, and after they will come and they will train, train you. Of course, they will not, yeah, they will not send you out, they just train you first. And again, they do quality control. If you again uh, fail, then they may take another measures because they may think you are not uh, able to, to work in lab. Or if you are a scientist, they do the same thing. So that's quality control. So I told you for uh, daily quality control, I told you about writing the results that you get somewhere. For example, today I got 70, tomorrow I get 71, uh, Sunday I will get uh, 75. Then you put all, you take all those results and you plot on graph, you write somewhere. This graph that is being used here is called Levy Jenning plot or Levy Jenning curve. So you see, this is the 50, this is the, the mean, like a target, and then you plot your samples here. If it is negative control for example, negative control for the blood sugar, here to be 70. And if you sample one was 71, it's here. If another one was 75, it's here. come here. If another one was 70, come here. If one was 100, it's come here. And then you trace this curve or this, uh, this, this, uh, this curve. So you know how to calculate one is standard deviation, two standard deviation, and three standard deviation. And you set, you set your values, your reference range. So if it fall out of two standard deviation, then there is a problem. It's called David Jenning plot or David Jenning curve. So this is what I was saying. The quality control sum might be true, the level 25, and it's normal control and the abnormal quality control. So it's normal and abnormal is what I was saying, uh, like uh, negative and positive. So example, fasting glucose is in non-diabetic, expect 70 and 100 micromolar. It's diagnostic between, and it's made when fasting glucose is this one. So the two quality control some might be chosen level of five. Uh, the laboratory deal with the patient having low glucose and, and this, uh, I think I told, I've talked all about all, the, all these things. The purpose of quality control is to make, monitor the reliability of the test. When the quality control is at fall within the range, acceptable values are resetted and the systematic around target value. When the sample fall outside the target windows, show the drift uh, and the, the usual take 
the, when the sample number results from fall outside of two standard deviation range. I think I have talked about this. The quality control results show problems. Systematic investigatory into resources problem. Before a patient sample can be tested, the results reported. The source of protein a problem need to be ignited for them. I think yes. Internal quality control if advice as external quality control. So depending on the who take the part of that activity, quality control is further to internal quality control, performed only by the lab personnel. So it's able to determine the reproductivity of results called by organizers value. So so here is the quality management system in the clinical lab laboratory. Uh, this concerns not only actual management of the laboratory, in terms of high quality resources. So this for the high quality management of the laboratory, which should be in enough materials to have to create a good environment in, within the lab, like a, a social environment, you have to provide the salaries and incentives. And you have to also to maintain the purpose of measurement system or quality management system to function properly, all lab process and the operators operation should be responsibly described and documented and the subsequently maintained as a controlled document. So for this quality management system to work properly, to be good, so you have to, to document of all the work. You know, even in normal life, if you don't write and then you lose, you lose the data. So in lab also, you should document everything. So this is part of the management. If you are a manager somewhere, not only in the lab, you have to make sure that uh, you produce documents and the, the documentation and the archive is the important part of the management system. Okay. So you have to create a situation where only current various documents exist in the laboratory and the outstanding version are filled and recorded and related to the lab operation required. Uh, so you have to have the uniform, the, the all the things. So good quality management uh, documentation typically has a different structure. Like the court manual uh, described. So in the lab, the documentation, there are many good documentation. For example, the main one is the quality manual. It's the manual which will describe the code of a laboratory, what is being done. Use this safe, how you deal with the the waste, how you deal with the, the accident, all this procedure about the waste, I'm sorry, about the safety should be included in those safety manuals. So the, yeah, the big document that should be, or must not should, must be in the laboratory. So one is quality manual, another one is the safety manual. There's also standard operating procedures. So they are called SOPs. So SOPs, are also documents which describe how the tests, the procedure of the tests, how the test is performed. For example, you are testing uh, uh, blood sugar using uh, maybe electrophoresis machine, Spec oh, no, sorry, spectrophotometer machine. So a document should be there giving all the structure, all the procedure, how you perform this test. So how to make sample, how to dilute sample, how to use the reagents, 
how to learn the, 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 the standard, how to learn the blank, how to calibrate the machine. All the procedure should be written somewhere. And that document will be called uh, blood sugar testing SOP, standard operating procedure. And you have it and you keep it in the lab. So I think once you go to the lab, please uh, remember to ask uh, Jean Dodier about to show you what is uh, standard operating procedure for the test that we'll be doing. And you remember to ask them where is the court manual. They'll show you what is court manual and they'll show you what is safety manual. So SOP, they have to show you court manual. and safety man. So remember to ask them how they, these documents look like. They, I think they have in the lab court manual, safety money, and SOPs. So SOPs is for every test that we do. So blood sugar has its own SOPs, protein has its own SOPs, uh, HIV, if you are used, you are testing HIV has its own, coronavirus it has, malaria it has, and the, or the, 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 the test that will be uh, analyzing in the lab, they should have their own SOP. There is also policies. So for example, the policy on uh, bringing bags in, in the laboratory. Like if you come to the lab as a student, you bring your own bags containing your laptops and your uh, Uh, all the uh, details, uh, lipstick and the pen and the, all, the, you, all your stuff. So a policy is a written document which is in lab, which is explaining how you keep all those, how you keep your bag. For example, if, if you come with, with your bags, there is a written policy saying that if a student enters this lab and he has a bag, he will first register what he has in the bag and then put it in uh, on the table. That's an example. That's a policy. So it's police indicating how to do or how to behave in love. That's an example of a policy. Another example of a policy is uh, uh, how to control, for example, the movement of people within the lab. Like you are, you are in lab, you are having, a, you are testing, you are busy, you are concentrated, and then someone will come, a member from your family, and will come your brother. And, hey, hello, please. When are you finishing the job? We have to go to visit my, our uncle, or we have to go do this one. So this is not allowed. So you have to have a policy saying that. Uh, this room is restricted, or this room only the allowed personnel are, can enter in this room. So these are policy, a policy document with a written document which is showing all the points uh, concerning about how people will behave in the lab. Okay. So there is also audit in clinical uh, uh, biochemistry. These labs that we are uh, talking about, or this lab that we are working in, or this lab that we are sending our sample, they are also assessed. There should be audits. Audit will come and check all this document that I was saying. So they are. They are, should be, of course. Uh, uh, they should be uh, done considering the national na national uh, standard or national rules and regulation. And this audit will come and evaluate, does this lab have the document? Is this lab have the court manual? Is this lab have the safety manual? What are they doing? Are they, are they calibrating their equipment? Are they... Uh, 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 having policies that preventing people to enter their in the lab, are they use, performing all the requirements or are they have all the requirements for safety? Is this lab well equipped? Is this lab will have enough personnel? So is this audit? 
And then there will be accreditation. Accreditation is a way of ranking laboratories, assessment, competitive laboratory to, to carry out the genetic services. So even in Rwanda, this process is going on of accreditation, where the labs are being accredited. So the external assessors will come and evaluate the lab and they will give you the stars, they will give you the ranking. The ranking, for example, you know how they rank hotels. Maybe you know some of you have been in Marriott or Radisson Hotel, another one they have been to Petit Prince or Credo and the I don't know if Shekina exists, I don't know. So you also, you can rank, you can give the accreditation and give the rank. So, you know, Serena Hotel is a five-star hotel. No, no, yeah, maybe. Or Marriott or Redson Blue, they are five five-star hotels. You know that maybe uh, Garileo is two-star hotel or three-star hotel, when you consider it's four-star hotel. Maybe Credo is one-star hotel. Uh, and uh, in the way, any one four four hmm? uh, baritos. Uh, baritos, maybe one baritos is unclassified. <laughs> so, is an example that I'm, I'm, I'm giving you because if. It goes under accreditation. It means that it will have a classification. They, they come, they give you stars. The same in the laboratories. They will come and they, they, they give you ranks. So now in Rwanda, you have four stars lab, have three stars lab, two stars lab, and one stars lab. Uh, if I remember well, uh, last time, I they got four stars. So this also, they have to fight for that because they audit for a and they ask the document. Because a hotel, if they come during the hotel accreditation, they come, they ask you if you have a swimming pool, they give marks, they check the safety, they check the, the hygiene, they check how you process food, they give marks, they check if you have documentation, they check the personnel, the staff, they are... Uh, they are ready for study, they, everything. So the same in the lab, they come, they say, do you have a court manual? Show us your court manual. They check if you many uh, masters, how many bachelor's degrees, and they take. You use machines. Are these machines calibrated? And you show the calibration report. You, do you do quality control, uh, internal quality control, and you show that revenue chart that I showed you. Yes, we do it even today. We plotted the numbers here, and this is the revenue chart. It's for within the range, so that's Okay, do you do external quality control? If yes, then show us the report from the external quality, quality uh, controllers and you show the report. And all those things, they will just put marks and they give you the blank. Good, the blank. If you do bad, then they give you the appropriate blank. One star or zero, or zero star or, or a moon. Okay. So this is laboratory management. Health and safety, providing material safety sheet. So this is uh, what they call material safety data sheet. This is a sheet where it's to indicate about the, uh, the about the safety and health. So I told you about the standard operating procedures, SOPs. Uh, produce comp computerization, how to calculate results and how they generate the reports. 
and there is a good laboratory practice. The good laboratory product is also a document which is indicating a procedure for monitoring laboratory performance from top specialists to the bench workers. So uh, this good laboratory pra practice is a document which is shown how which showing how the laboratory is a, a document indicating the procedure for monitoring the laboratory from the boss to the to the work bench worker. For example, staff. Do you have staff? Are they enough in number? Are they trained? How the de degrees? And then they take uh, the equipment. Is the equipment good? The calibration, the procedure, are you the method for and the SOPs, the data, are you analyzing the data or you're just giving the data to the doctor? Like if the numbers are coming, then you send to the doctor and you are confusing him. So the laboratory should generate good and the understandable data instead of just sending the number which will confuse the doctor. Okay. So this is the first part of today. I think is a somehow is it interesting or we skip it next time? Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to ask about the sensitivity and specificity of a test. Yes. Uh, you, you gave us an example of retrovirus. So I want to ask, uh, those tests can show you that you are positive when you are not even positive because they are are more sensitive to other virus. Yes. Yeah, okay. That's yeah, 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 sure. That's why I say they are sensitive. They have high sensitivity because uh, they are not indicating, uh, they are not uh, indicating that the test is 100% negative. Let's give you, uh, or it's 100% positive. Let's give you an example. If you go to the lab and you test, uh, you they test HIV using the those uh, rapid test. If it is positive, then they will not confirm the positivity because they know that it is high sensitive to other viruses. You understand? So in lab, ah, sometimes you have a Lap you test in your bags. The boys, are you there? You have a rapid test. Yeah. Eh? You have a rapid test in your bags, in your in your dormitory, in your rooms. Yes. That's you see, you think that you will test someone, a girl who will come to your girlfriend or your, your colleagues, your best if they come to visit you, say ah. I will first test her if she, if she is HIV negative. And they use that test. That's rapid test. And it is positive. What will you do? Chasing her. <laughs> so actually, it doesn't mean 100% she is positive. She is HIV positive. Because that's that uh, comb or the termine test that you have, that rapid test that you have, as I told you, it has, it has high sensitivity. It may be positive to other viruses. That's why the positive have to be, have to be confirmed by another test. You understand? But she has viruses, that's why. Yes, and uh, and I told you that it may also have maybe ninety percent of sensitivity. We saw one yoko. Niba kava ya positive. If you go positive, mirongo chenda kujana HIV irahari. Changua 
Yeah, cyangwa test de grossesse cyo cyangwa hepatitis B virus or hepatitis C virus. Okay. If it is niyo mpamvu ugomba kuyikonfirminga ukoresheje izindi test. Ariko don't forget that it has high sensitivity. Kuvuga ngo 90 ku ijana n'ubundi uwo muntu ashaka kuyo virus ayifite. Ariko hari 10 ku ijana rivuga ngo iyi virus ishobora guterwa n'izindi na kuyi positivity mbonye ishobora guterwa n'izindi virus. Niyo mpamvu ugomba gukonfirminga ukoresheje izindi test. Ahariko <laughs> capillaries kwaishiraho yaba positive none ukavuga ati ebyiri muri esha zawe positive umuntu ni positive ubwo bivuze ngo ari ku nshuro nyinshi ushaka nyine kureba ha percentage nyuma bavuze ngo ukora ama samples yabarwayi bangana gutya ugakubija na uka Waso byumvi sibyo nakubwiye cyangwa network yari yaje Network yari yaje Ah yeah no kuna vuze ibintu byinshi sha ungiye kubisubiramo Namwe roza matese ya ya HIV cyangwa ya hepatitis B ya C viruses Ara matese ya determine Donc ama test rapide dukoresha ashobora kuba positive ariko yaba ye positive kubera yuko iri sensitive cyane ifite high sensitivity ishobora kuba positive kuzindi ndwara kuzindi viruses niyo mpamvu igomba kuba confirmed in izindi test for example chera kuri HIV bakoraga izindi test imwe itwa in gold na yaba positive then it's positive in gold yaba negative imwe wabanje ya mbere ya determine yaba negative and then yaba positive izindi bizikane yakangahe Ibyo na bahaje positive zawe negative nizi turakubija na turebe specificity ifite gutyo That's why I was advising you if muri za acrobasi za ukora hari ya muri dormitory so if you test someone and the with the rapid test and the, she's positive 
nabwo ntuzumve ngo ngo mwari mungo yarambiye ngo buri ngo ushobora kuba ngo kuko testing ngo ni high sensitive ngo ushobora kuba izindi virus ah ah ni sensitive ariko ifite na high specificity vuga ngo mirus test rapid nundi na confirmiza aba positive ako gatano kwijana ngo gashobora kuba negative nuno birumvikana Yeah. So this part, we finished this part. So let's take another one. This chapter is, is uh, done. We finish it and uh, but we still have another one. Hmm? I have a question. Yes. Uh, about the, the way we do, con you told us we can do internal control. The lab technician is the one who does internal control for his or her layer, so that to make sure that they are they're normal. And mm. we understand who does the external control in the laboratory. Okay. Uh, you who is working in lab, so you as a, not only the lab technician, so the lab is for many people, the lab technician, the lab scientist, or those who are performing experiments. That's why I call I call them experimenters. So now we are up technician, including the scientists, including the the researchers. We are also working on the lab. internal quality control before we start the work. So even do power of the Then external quality control. If one is in the lab, for example, Seashibe is a lab. Laboratory Seashibe in lab. Yeah. Ibitaro Shinzwe laboratoire zose. Iyo niza igakora external quality control. Niyo izahereza abantu bakaza noneho bo bakarareba niba ibyo mukora ari byo. Bakababwira ati mu mpereze niba mupima malaria, mu mpama slide ya malaria ari positive atatu, mu mpena ari positive atatu, ari negative atatu. Bo bakagenda bakayapima, bamara kuyapima bakavuga bati slide twakuye muri SHIB Ibadwa yesha tuzili positivu, zo zaba ya positivu. Nesha tuzili negativu, zaba ya negativu. Kwa ahuje miso vizo, waka wama nutisha na kuisha. Basho wala kuwana na wanao, sashibe mwujo mwa wabaha yibi hali binyura nye, mwa wabaha yibi positivu, ni negativu, hulicho. Na mwaba wama nota, waka wama minungu tanu, bijaa minungu tanda kujia ina ya mwata mwa wana. Kurumba lilo external quality assessor, cha controller, ni laboratoa ya nasionari. Kwa ya tulutse hanze, ni indi labo ya vuye hanze, itari ya indi ya indi ishobora kuba ari laboratoire yashyizweho na leta nyine irebarebera nkuko laboratoire national ishobora no kuba ari laboratoire iri hanze iri private umwe mukajya muvuga ati tugiye gukorana imikoranire n'indi rabo niba tuvugera medicale na na medirabs no rugero medirabs hano mu mujyi na medicale yo kwitaba 
tuzajya twebwe tujye kumvikana tujye dukorana external quality control tuzajya twohereza sample yacu cyangwa twamaze gupima tuyohereze medirabs baturebere uko babone ibisubizo nk'ibyaka natwe tubarebere urumva rero ni external byatumye hazamo indirabu yo hanze fa kwa ibintu mwumvikanye fa ku bitegeko rya leta ucyo cyangwa kandi niyo baje muri accreditation abagwiraga abantu baje kwa kwa accreditation babasaba ibyo byose se mu correct kana kwa quality control mukwebere mu correct kana quality control nabyo mukwebere is now okay yes thank you prof okay good ibiro tujye kujya mu byo tujye kubica mu twijuta kugira ngo mbareke cyangwa urashaka kujya gukina Ushaka kujya pause break cyadukomeza Okay let's continue So the technical measurement in the clinical chemistry so we are now going to do, to see what are the techniques used in the clinical chemistry Some techniques used in the clinical chemistry uh, include so the chromatography uh, electrophoresis Centrifugation, filtration, dialysis, spectrophotometers, and fluorimetry. What is uh, uh, what is uh, chromatography? So the basic principles of chromatography. There is a physical method of separation. So the chromatography is for separation. This chromatography have two phases. The mobile phases and stationary phase. Then the substances are separated based on the differences interaction with these two phases as a mobile phase move across the stationary phase. This is, is, is the principle. So the chromatography has two phases. One is mobile phases. Mobile phase is liquid. So it's a mixture of reagents. And the stationary phase is a, like a, a pipe where the mobile phase will pass. So this principle of chromatography is based on the separation. So during its path to the mobile, to the stationary phase, the mobile phase, in mobile phase containing the sample, it will interact with the stationary phase which end or which results that maybe it will attract some molecules and, and, will, and the other molecule will pass with the mobile phases and then it will be detected. And then the time of detection will be, will be recorded. Yes. So mobile phase it may be gas, or the stationary phase may be particles of solid gel, liquid, or most of them time they head by column. So this stationary phase, uh, it may be liquid or gel. Chang was a solid. So I told you that the, the, the mobile phase has solutes. The, those are the reagents. No, so the, yeah, the reagents. The liquid and mobile phases. Uh, let's find a group chain measure. Oh, oh.
Oh yes, I'm just I want to show you something. So are you seeing this? Yes. You are seeing this? Okay. I was just explaining you what is high performance Ricky the chromatography.
office of Majid Mullah. Ugoni kundi. Eh, wana mani chuma kwa mimi. Okay. So mga habo njwena vere kagabia HPR si. So I told you that the mobile phase is here, the pump, the injector, the column. So the stationary phase are located here in the column. So you have to, know, to choose which, which uh, column I'm going, I'm going to use, if it is polar or if I'm, you use gel. You may always also use the antibodies if you know that uh, your target protein is here. So you know or, or, or producing antibodies or using the antibodies they will come and bind here so the bounded the antibody will live here and unbounded unbounded will go with the the mobile phases and then it will be detected and you know that my target antibody my target antibody is uh, detected at the 10 second then it will at the 10 second we detect you are antibody it's the same with the polarity the same with the gel the same okay So mobile brain, mobile stationary phases may be particle of solid or gel or liquid, and most of this time, in a chromatographic process, mobile phase containing solute. Of I showed you how the mobile phase contains solute. The solute interacted with stationary phase by reversibly binding to the stationary phase. I told you, if the solute is, if that mobile phase, our target is, we are targeting high polar things, and we have the polar in stationary phase, then the polarity will be mixed. Let me give you an example. Turamanutse njewe mwarimu, sepe wanyu, nabandi banyi shuri, batatunuru jero. Tuvyano kuri fakati ya medicine tujie mchigo kuri start tujie kui changes. Mkufuga ngo mbiko kumanuka kutuza manuka nghi chigare tujita yu kwa mobile phase. Sibijo? Hariko 
nitugera hari ya kuri kuri Bartos hari ngewe utazwe nabantu benshi ko sindi umunyeshuri wende ntago nziranye nabanyeshuri benshi ari CP umuyobozi nawe kubera bafite akazi kenshi hari giye atabona uburyo aganira nabanyeshuri abari abari bis nawe ntaziranye nabantu benshi akaba nabanyeshuri nabo bono no baziranye nabantu benshi no kuvuga ngo nitugera hariya kuri Bartos na za Bengazi muri abanyeshuri harimo bakobwa nitugera hariya kuko Bengazi twemo na bakobwa benshi ba bakobwa bazatangira kugenda basuzanya na bagenzi babo ubundi kwa ngo hariya kuri Bengazi twite nka stationary phase twite kolam kolam ni hana tuzaca imbere ya Bengazi tuzamuka tujya kuri stade kubera harimo bakobwa kandi hatu ya bakobwa bazahagara basuzanya na bagenzi babo cyo gihe bazaguma muri pola ko bahuye nabo bahuje CP wenda nabo yaziranye nabakobwa babiri cyangwa batatu cyangwa nabandi bahuye nabandi ba CP bagenzi be abasuhuze nje udafite abantu nzi nzagumya nitambukire no kuvuga ngo haje hawo separation twatangiye turi benshi noneho tugenda tuba separated bijyanye ni affinity dufite kuri stationary phase urabyumvika nawe twatangiye muri mobile phase turi benshi ariko bijyanye ne the affinity we have on the stationary phase stationary phase ariyo ya indi iri muri column ya column ariyo niho zabingaze twagiye dutandukana igihe tuzagerera kuri stade kuvuga ngo wa mukobwa wacu ufitiye abagenze benshi azatinda bengaza suhuzanya abarasigaye wa musepe na wazahura nabandi basepe cyabandi batipe hariya nawe batari benshi nka mukobwa nawe agenda ahagara wende harya kuri koyika nje utaza abantu wenda nzasuza mu mustaf umwe ngeze hejuru kuri stade nageze urumva nzahagira mbere yese pagire bwa kabiri wa mukobwa hagire bwa gatatu cyo gihe hari ukuntu abantu bagiye basigara mu station phase niba rero ndimo ndapima in lab nkorisha hps kaba mvuga nti tageti yange no kuzafata cp CP agerera hari gihe kingana gute ndabanza kiro standard imenye ngo standard ya CP ahagira ku segonda rya 10 nibwo azabageze muri stade Professor Alex azaba hageze ku segonda rya gatahana Mukobwa wacu Clementina azaba hageze nyuma minota itatu ibyo nkaba mbizi ubwo rero nokuvuga ngo station phase iniyo ikora separation bigendewe n'ikintu kintu gikunda gifite affinity I gave you example niba turi ko turakora ibintu biri high polar no kuvuga ngo biramanuka muri ya solvent ya ya mobile phase sinzi namubyibuka eh ibiri high polar biramanuka muri solvent ya mobile phase biraza muri no solve mobile phase pump bi pump nibigira hano sample ijemo nibigira hano muri stationary phase hamwe kwise boingazi niba bifite polarity yo hejuru bizaje hano tuzadufite mona bizafata kubiri bi te polarity na hano ibiri les polar bizakomeza bibe detected niba tugambire gupima amazi twatuzi kwa bifite polarity hejuru azaza nyuma koko azaba yabanje kuguma niba ari antibodies tuzi yuko antigens tuzi yuko tugoma kuzikoting ngozi antibody ziri proportional tuzazikira hano iba antigen runaka dushaka ubwo izitari fata kuri antibodies zizakomeza izifata kuri antibodies zisigare mu hano and then inyuma tuze ku apply ngami in this solution is washing out tuze kuzitetectinga hano byanye na time twafatisha so this detector is detected as curve hope you understand as a prophet and process itangirira hehe itangirira ofet process itangirira hano kuri stationary phase na sorry kuri mobile phase ikaba pump di hano and then you, you put your sample here machine izi kazi ifati bifite injector no rushingi zigafata muri sample igaho ikazi huza na ya solvent ya turutse hano muri mobile phase bigahura and then ikaba pump sawa Okay. 
So as I was saying, the stationary phase may be particles of a solid or gel. Most of this time are, are held by quorum or thin layer. So I talked about the quorum. The chromatographic process of mobile phase contains a solute of interest passed through the fixed stationary phase. The solute interacted with the stationary phase by the reversible binding of stationary phase. This even obvious. So quorum. Chromatograph through the phase matrix and the liquid phase is passed through the it remain there because it has the affinity. And then after a certain period, B also will come and B also will be corrected. You understand? So they were separated by time dependent on the affinity in stationary phase. Understand? Jatanjirihano A is, is blue and B is black. Ijerunaka and then A kubera kwitafite affinity because A doesn't have affinity in this column, it passed first and it was corrected and analyzed. So C here is here, it's analyzed. So B, because it has the affinity, it will come later. And then it So you can see your slide. You see this, these tubes. This column is the stationary phase. So our solution contain our mobile phase contain A and B solute. No, no, A and B molecules. So A is blue and B is black. So this is image one. The image two, then we started our machine. Uh, the liquid mobile phase started moving. The image, image number C, the molecule A, which is blue, it moved with the mobile phase as it is indicated here. And the image number four, all the image, blue image, A compound, was were collected here and then analyzed first time. Second time in the image E, you see uh, the black color remain here, also started to move. After the blue color, the compound A was analyzed. So, and then the black also came. Same of the example that I was giving you. Take these blue colors compound as, as me and the CP, and take the black colors as the girl that I was saying. So because girls, uh, because girls had, have the uh, first to greet their colleagues in Benghazi, they didn't finish first. So they came later. Because me and the CP, we, where the compound A, we don't have a friend there, then we reached first. So, and then the last one is compound B, which will be analyzed 
And you know that because of a standard, we know the time for A and you know the time for B. And then we, we plot a curve. So the criteria of separation is this, this shape, of course, there is, there is charge, there is a biological specificity, like enzyme, enzyme substrate is, enzyme inhibitor, the ligand, the antigen antibodies. I talked about this. Okay, the same here. You see the solvent, it has a, these jet particles, the large molecule and the small molecules. Here, the molecule to interpose remain, to interpose remain exclusively in the mobile phase and rapid review. So this is mobile phase. This is a column. It has pores. Jet, jet particles or pores. If you put the mob in your mobile phase containing the molecule, which are large and small, then the small molecules will remain in these pores. And the large molecule will pass with it, the mobile phase. You understand? no, <laughs> Ariko inina abutu watu kwa wikoze Chasa wababa wikoze kugi mamu Kwa wababa teka du Cherele zeba mge tureka wandi wame wajene Nono tujendu detektinga uko wajewa haja Ni wafu za tureka du fate Mwri sampa ya atu molekiri zifite Noya Small molecules Tuza zifata kuti Urabona yengi yini kola mwri atu Ifita mo holes Tutu natuku mgeiro ni holes Jail holes Ama hori za kuzga mwriche. Iyo hejuru, tutukumu karatuku inshi, ni solventi yatu, ni ya mobile face ya maze kuhu za nasamu. Ni tuyunyuza mohano. Utuduto ya particles zin hoya, ziza agwa mwri hori zi hano. Ziza agwa mamu. Aliko particles zin hini kukuzi tashula kufata mwri hori zi ziza agwa mamu zi manu kane na mobile face. Yonko ni ya liquid yatu. And then, the large molecule will be analyzed first. While the small molecules will come later. Oh no, more of you, huh? So we come slowly and they analyze the later. And could you get child detection? The child analyzes child detection, but detecting a two day in the equity time is a hajas and very essay never to require analyzing. I went to Omuti with quite time to talk to the Yuko or Sans with time to talk to the Yaku Sagona Jatrum. Sedu fute kavu zinga he zaajeze za pisa gonda di jatumi zaajeze zari zinga tambito ya zaajeze kanga na kutuza biana. Now you understand? Yes. Okay. In addition to par to preparative application, gel filtration chromatography has been used in clinical laboratories. So this is a gel chromatography. Gel filtration or gel actually is chromatography, but chromatography is used many, as I told you. you may use gel to separate, you may use uh, molecule, no, the, the affinity, the polarity for separation, you may use uh, antibody antigen for separation, you, you may use uh, filters. So here we are talking about the gel separation. So it is called gel filtration chromatography. It may, it may be used to, to determine the molecular weight of the macromolecules, as I showed you, or to remove low molecular weight salts or buffer ions from the protein solution. So affinity chromatography. So the stationary phase in affinity chromatography is prepared by immobilizing a rig and a particle support. The clinical laboratory has been used to separate protein and the antibiotics. 
antibodies affinity chromatography. Now we are going to talk about the antibodies affinity chromatography. A specific antibody is equivalent to a target to be the, uh, the packet quorum. The only protein with a high affinity for antibody is retained by the quorum, and then a non-binding protein will be flowed. So well, if you are targeting a protein, then we, we, we put antibody in a, a stationary phase in the quorum. Is the most vite affinity, the ones who have the protein who have high affinity with the antibodies will remain there. And the one who have not high affinity, the non-binding one, will go through with flow, will go through, uh, will go through with the, with the, the mobile phase. You understand? We're now going about the gel. We just have to get the gel pores. Do you know? If you have a question, we're going to start creating a pores with that gel. We're going to know how to have a collagen or to get collagen antibodies. Antibodies are going to be stationary in the stationary phase, in the quorum. No, no, to apply in the proteins with the affinity in the antibodies are going to be fashion. They bind in the collagen antibody. No, no, it's not binded. It's going to be done. Na station na mobile phase ya liquid ya kwa ziwe detected first and then zina zawe binded ziza wa detected dini mama kupozo za dhiye zidi nda gachi ya ni baba kubwa baje nda gachi ya ni baje nda kula na baje nzawa sawa ya baje zipenga zidi kani tuani moto jamu ni sada kui changes ni wingi baon the protein is irritated with the acid solution which discover the antigen and antibody complex. So, you see, this is the column, the, the stationary phase. So if you take, we have antibodies. Protein is this, the red color is a protein, which you recognize by antibody. So then the, the, the blue one is the antibody. So here in the stationary phase, in this column, we have antibodies, the blue one. No, 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 Ama ma proteine, ama ma proteine of target, do target inzo wenda ni watu ni mukure ba any protein like enzyme. Msa anki ni chini, akawamu ni zini proteine do target inzo ni ziza blue. The target protein iza za ihure na ya specific antibody. Mwalimu bana, ni mara kuhura na specific antibody iza ifato. Zinga zitari tajete, ziza kumeza zimanu kizi na zubu ruzi kwa zitari tajete, zige ndere, zige kuwa, hagu zawa ya kwa 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 just to, to either you may apply sodium chloride for washing and this antibody then was very detached. This is anuma. These are the targets. This protein is attached to the antibody and then we wash. And tomorrow we washing that to apply the, 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 that's the NSA that or any other solution is as detaching a specific antibody. So you understand? Yes. Do you understand? Yes? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Let's continue. So ion exchange chromatography. I told you about the ion exchange. I told you about the polarity. So this is the high polar and low polar, uh, high polarity. I talked about this. So the same, the same is if the polarity we use in the cigarette. We use it if it is in the cigarette. The same principle. So there is also gas chromatography. It's used to separate a mix of compounds that are volatile and it can be made and those who can be made volatile. It may gas solid chromatography with a solid stationary phase. Or gas liquid chromatography with non volatile liquid stationary phase. The mobile phase is inert gas and generally lithium. Uh, yeah, this is the same principle. This is the, instead of for gas chromatography, instead of using uh, 
liquid, mobile phase, then you use the gas. So you are seeing here, this is the, the gas uh, container, the cylinder of mobile phase, the gas, the gas. So this gas will pass here and be, be detected. Like that. This is the cylinder, this is the, the, the column where the station phase is located. So HPLC high performance liquid chromatograph is the one the most widely used in analytic exploration technique. It's a low analysis, analysis of to be completed quickly with the super separation is sensitive compared to other liquid chromatograph methods. This is regards, even if it theory, there is some of them, there is no science behind it. I say they are saying about the column, or other, we talked about this. The instruments, this instrument of naivetes, I showed you this instrument, and how the results will be, will be analyzed as these curves. The pump, I told you about the pump, I told you about the sample injector, I told you about the detector, I showed the pump. It's just to pump the, the mobile phase, the injector, a sample injection is to inject the sample, the detective for detection, and the recorder is all the, 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 the recording, and it's really analyzed as a glass. And they also seen layer chromatography is based on a separate separation using this filter paper. Okay, we finish with chromatography. Let's now talk about electrophoresis. Electrophoresis is a process of migration of charged molecules through solution in applied electric field. The rate of migration or migration depends on the net charge, charge, and shape. Strength of the field is also a conic strength. The viscosity, temperature, medium. Uh, uh, as an article tools, electrophoresis is simple, rapid, and highly sensitive. It can be used in an article study for the property of the single charge species, can also be used. To Actual electrophoresis is based on charge, electrical charges. So, uh, you know, uh, the protein, some protein are negative charged or positive charged, but mainly they are negative charged. Uh, why, why, are they, are they, why are the protein, are they negative charged? Can someone, Give the answer. If you give the answer to that question, I will give you facts five marks in cut. Come again. Why proteins are negatively charged? Why are they negatively charged? Because when we migrate, this electrophoresis is based on migration of a protein. So when we migrate the protein, they will migrate from positive to negative. It means because protein are negative charged, they will migrate. When we apply the electricity, they will migrate from cathode, oh no, from anode to cathode. You know, they are negative charge, sorry. So they move from negative, so from cathode to anode. Why? Uh, I think it depends on Hello? Oh, no? Hello? Oh. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, well, uh, um, I missed this. So, uh, what? What I know is that the protein is made by the citerion ion, which is the net charge is negative. So, but also it depends on the environment. The okay. citerion ions made the protein okay. one which make it to be negative because the net charge is negative at all. Thank you. Uh, you tried, but not exactly the answer that I wanted. Okay. Uh, I think it depends on the buffer solution they are using. They can be either positive or negative. 
No, because the buffer solution it's just there for uh, allowing a protein to migrate, but they will not give the property of the protein. They will not change the property of the sample. Another one. Actually, the response. The, the, yes. It depends on the pH. Uh, actually, the, 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 the answer is easy. You remember transcription? The DNA transcription. You remember DNA? And you know the DNA is made by, by, by the pantose sugar, mm. it's made by nucleotides. Mm. Remember that? Yes. And, and the phosphate, phosphate group. So the negative, and you, you remember that the protein are made by DNA in a process called the translation. You remember it, the translation. How the, the transfer RNA, with, with messenger RNA will take formation from DNA and then it transfer RNA and then they give amino, uh, sorry, peptides to give amino acid and then the protein. Yes. So this is negative recharge because the DNA is phosphorated. This negative charge comes from phosphorylation of DNA, phosphor group present on DNA. Okay. I said Hmm? Now, now, you want to difference? No, it was. negative charge the phosphate, could phosphate group here, nucleotide. Yeah. Hey, what was? Ah, then you are yeah, nice. Then come to claim your mark. Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So, the, the, this uh, phosphate group in negative charge, Niza Tuma, and a protein, Tuzawa, and Izawa, it charge negative. So, uh, this electrophoresis is based on the migration, as you can see here. So they will migrate from here. This is before electrophoresis, it was like this. And then after electrophoresis and see the, the pure B. strip and the gel electrophoresis how do you this protein you migrate through in gel chat system are typically employed for analytical rather than uh, perspective scale or separate so this is the gel electrophoresis how to migrate from positive so you put sample here you load the sample in gel and you apply the electrodes and then the electricity will we, we push the protein to migrate from the positive to negative, from the neg uh, sorry, from, from positive to negative. Okay. So this paper electrophoresis, uh, this uh, the same applied on paper. So the gel electrophoresis, this electrophoresis molecule which have nearly identical charge, must earn results in the little or non-separation difference length. So uh, here after separation, after migration, and then we will, we will measure the size. So we will uh, decode or, yes, according to the size. If we know that our protein has this size, for example, if you are measuring a protein called uh, genus kinase, jack, jack protein, jack 2, genus kinase 2, and we know that genus kinase 2, it has a 100 in the 20 kilodalton. So after migration, we have what to do, we will go and find that 
the genus Kinase migrated up up to 120 kilodaltons. That's an example. So if you are roading, for example, uh, uh, we are uh, in PCR, for example, we are running gel PCR. We have just run DNA and we put electricity and, uh, and we know that at the certain uh, size, the band will appear there. Then we say, okay, this uh, sample has this DNA inside, okay? So agarose gel electrophoresis has been successfully applied in analysis of serum protein hemoglobin variant, is enzyme lipoprotein function. The advantage of agarose gel is include low affinity of protein and native clearly after dying, which permit excellent demonstration. SDS polychromide gel electrophoresis. So this is also gel uh, cast between the pair of glass plate and the polarized solution of acrylamide monomer into polychromate chain and so here you have two glasses and you you made the gel inside the glasses but you re, you leave pore where you will put your sample and then you migrate let me show you an image maybe you cannot understand okay let's do this Are you seeing here? So uh, this is the glasses that I was saying. So you put the glasses here, there's two glasses here, and you create a gel, this is a gel, and you leave wells, you see these wells? So you put your sample here in the wells, like you see here, they are injecting sample in the wells, look at here. You put sample here. This, is, this glass contain, uh, uh, is a gel, contain a gel inside. So you put sample here, and then you apply electricity, like here, you see here, so you apply the, so this is positive, this is negative. Migration like this, you see. From the big protein to the, you see the protein, the Dalton, how the, the bands came, and then you say my target protein, you know that your target protein is size. So you, you go and you compare, so like this. You may say this, you see this band, this is a band. And for example, if uh, our protein was a P53, do you know P53? is a kind of a protein which is a, a cancer suppressor. If you are measuring a P53 after migration, the band will come here. You see 50 here? So the band will come here around 50. And this band is showing that our sample, this sample one, number one is sample number two, sample number three, sample number four. And with this band showing that our sample has P53, protein, okay? It's an example, P53 is an example. You can, we may also use another protein like, uh, uh, as I, I was saying, like uh, STAT5, STAT, Changwa genus kinase protein. So this sample has a lot of, because the STAT5 maybe has a 170. So this, this sample has a lot of 
This doesn't have stat five. This has a lot of stat five. This is like that. You understand? You get it? Students, are you there? Yes. Okay, good. So you got it. You understand? Okay, let's continue. So after this SDS page, um, the, this is what I was saying, that they will move or they may create depending to their size. So this is bigger, this is a medium, this small. And then we, we know that the big size, for example, with, depending on our targeted protein, if you are uh, analyzing, for example, the protein, a certain protein, I told you many proteins, so like genus kinase, like uh, STAT5, like a P53, like a PDA1, all those are protein we know that we have in the library, we know the size. So if it comes on uh, 50, and we know that we applied the, the antibody, which we bind it, applied it, like uh, applied the antibody of 53, anti 53, and it comes there, then it is, it is 53. Okay. So this is what I was saying, how the, it, the, it will uh, move. So this is electrophoresis. So this is a, how the protein will be coated here and then we apply electricity. It's like uh, using uh, pH. So, it is called isoelectric focusing. It is an electrophoretic technique that separates micromolecules on the basis of the isoelectric points. The pH value at which they carry in charge. pH gradient is established in a polychromate gel with aid of amphorites. So this, uh, this pH, It will be uh, established CBA so in the poly. This infrared actually infrared is uh, is uh, co infrared contain both acid and base. So the separation will be based on this uh, on the pH. Is then it is connected to the. The chamber and dilute the base solution to cut the chamber. So you know that I showed that. So isoelectric isoelectric uh, focusing. It That is with our, our reagent, sort our sample here, and then we migrate. Okay, then let's talk about centrifugation. Centrifugation is based on the separation. No, nothing else. Centrifugation just to separate. Centrifugation process in which centrifugal force is used to separate solid matter from the liquid suspension. The centrifuge are generally used to separate serum, plasma. Uh, centrifugation is something easy. I think you know it. Have you ever used centrifuge? Yeah. So you have a, you have a sample in your tube, you put in a centrifuge, and you apply the the speed 
and then it, the sample will be uh, separated the solid the liquid like that this one you know so this is a centrifuge so this is centrifuge how it is principle of centrifugation so the pellet will come uh, the after centrifugation the liquid part will go up and the, the pellet which is the solid part will be down and if you you are you are targeting the pellet, then you take the pellet, or if you are targeting the, the supplement, you take the supplement. You know, in many cases, for example, blood, blood, the, 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 the plasma part, is, which is the liquid part will be up, and the, then the solid part, which is contained, which part contains the cells will be down. So if you target the protein, and you know that protein and the plasma, then you take a plasma or syrup. If you are targeting cells, And you know that cell is a blood cell, it's middle, it, what is called buffer coat. So it's part of white, it is. between plasma and red blood cells. Huh? I'll take paper filter and you filtrate. See the sounds? Okay, then if you filter a different pore size should be selected according to separation need. So the paper filter, they have size, pores, size. I should try to filter the filter and the particles in it. I should try to filter the filter. I should try to filter the which kind of paper filter? That one is easy. So dialysis is also another kind of separating. So the basic the solution is it put it into a bag, or is it in, or is it contained, or inside or semi permeable membrane. The right molecule are retained within the sac or on side or one side of the membrane where the small molecule and the solvent diffuse out. So you put all the things in a bag or a container, aliquid semi permeable. Then the large one will stay inside and the, the small one will go with the, 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 the solute, the solvent, sorry. Like this one, you see this is in the bag. So you can composition of a lot of particles. And then after a certain time, the small one will leave and it will be in so, so solvent, while the, the large one, will, the, this green one will stay inside there. So photometrics, I, I think I talked about photometrics. Okay, photometric actually, if you say photo, it means uh, the light. So the photometric is a branch of science that deals with measurement of the transit of light. It is commonly a multi technique used in clinical biochemistry. So this photometry, we use it in clinical biochemistry. So this deal the, the light, the intensity of the light. The photometry is based on the physical laws of radiance, energy of light. In this method is in terms of the absorbent transmitted or reflected light, it's measured and related to the concentration of intensity. The device is used is called the spectrophotometer. So this is also easy. Because uh, you remember the HPRC, high performance liquid chromatography. I told you about how the, the, the liquid, the mobile phase remove and then it detected. So for this photometric, it's a light which we pass through the sample and then we detect the concentration of light. 
How? We have, it's a machine, spectral photometer is a machine. So our sample, if it contain, uh, let's say that our sample contains uh, the target uh, compound that you want to measure. So we will apply the, the light and that will pass through the sample. and will be deflected, and another one will be uh, transmitted. So we will measure the transmitted light. The transmitted one is the one who passed, or which passed in the sample and then transmitted. So the concentration of the sample will echo or not, because depending on the, the principle that we're using, to the concentration the intensity of the light will echo to the concentration of this, so the particles that we are measuring in the sample. For example, see here, the blue one is, is our sample and the green one is the light. So we put our sample here and we apply light. So if we apply light, it means not all the light that will be transmitted. Because if this sample is concentrated, some light will stay here and another one will be transmitted. So we will measure the transmitted light. So this transmitted light, it may occur to the concentration here or it may not occur to the concentration here. So we have many formulas that we may apply. So there is BR number low. Be as low, not in, uh, mixing or score low. It's be a Lambert low. Or Lambert be as low. He said something that we're measuring here. Is proportional to the light that will be inversely proportional to the logarithm of the transmitted light. Depending on the principle that you are using, it's also it's Can also be at the instrument. Photometer is the right in the or luminous in the spectrophotometer is the, uh, the instrument. So look at here. It, this image will help you to understand more. And this is the spectrophotometer. We will put our sample here. This is, this is a sample. So we put sample in a cuvette. It's a cuvette is a kind of a, a tube, a transparent tube. So we put our sample there. We mix it with the reagent, with the reagent, and we put the sample there. Yeah. And then to focus the right into the... Sample, it will come and again. No, no, sorry. There is a lamp, there is a lens, and then there is three.
the light sample detector. Then the reference. So, uh, I was saying light sample detector. So you transmitted light, they absorbed the light, they scattered light, or you know those terms. So, so they absorbed light, they are the light which was absorbed in sample. The transmitted light is one which was transmitted. Like this one, some light may be absorbed here. Detected. It may be proportional. Concentration of the target uh, substance we are measuring here, or it may inverse no proportion to the substance that we are measuring, depending on uh, the principle that we are using. So, but generally, spectrophotometer is this one. So, for spectrophotometer, you have to know how the lamp is focusing the light and how the monochromatic light will be passed through the cuvet and will be detected. And you have also to know. What is it? Uh, the investment proportional or how how uh, transmitted light is uh, directly proportional to the absorbers. So this number globe here, and uh, the same here. Schematic presentation of strict for fluorometry, same there, and then the reference. So I think you understand uh, if not then you will be also having time to go to the lab because all these are techniques that are based in are practical techniques so you have a lab they will show you uh, uh, how this uh, instrument work so i hope you understand more When you so please advise the slide on from Tuesday from Next week, except uh, electrophoresis in the HPRC, but for electrophoresis in the HPRC, you may also use Google, sorry, YouTube, and there are a lot of videos that you can be helpful to you on YouTube. Okay.